Hi, Crash from Sanity is a video game that exists. Also, speedrunning is a thing that exists. It's where you try to finish a game as fast as possible. The world record for speedrunning Crash from Sanity is 13 minutes and 40 seconds, which was achieved by this weird, cringy guy named Noah three months ago. My next goal is to get a 13 3x, in other words, beat the record by one second. In order to beat this record, I would like to just do a million runs, however, targeted practice of specific parts of the run is probably a more efficient way to practice, so for this video I'm going to practice the part of the run that I find to be the most difficult, something which we call warp skip. If you were playing the game normally, once you reach this part of the game, you would run over here and go through three levels to beat the game, Rock Slide Rumble, Bandicoot Pursuit, and Ant Agony. However, speedrunning the game, we use a strat called Warp Skip to skip straight to Ant Agony, the final level of the game. This portal at the start of Ant Agony is here so that you can go back to previous levels of the game. Normally, you can't get to this part of the portal until you have completed Rock Slide Rumble and Bandicoot Pursuit. However, a way around that is to do Warp Skip, in which you use Cortex to jump up the side of the the lab and make your way up to the portal, taking you directly to Ant Agony. This skip is very difficult to do quickly because you have to do this difficult platforming to get Cortex to teleport to a specific spot and then you have to body slam onto this end, which is very very inconsistent. So anyways, I'm going to practice this a lot, but first I'm going to determine what my current success rate for this skip is. To do that, I did a bunch of attempts on camera a few days ago and then counted four different things. The number of attempts, number of successful setups, number of successful body slams, and number of successful finishes. For finishes, I only counted successes if I made no mistakes, such as not getting the slide jump or missing one of these jumps. For setups, I only counted successes if I placed Cortex in a good location on the first try. The line between a good and bad location is hard to distinguish, so I had to make a lot of judgment calls when determining whether to count a success or not. These are the results of the test I did on October 4th. The difference between individual and overall success rate is this. An individual success rate is the rate at which I succeeded at a specific part of the skip, whereas the overall success rate is the rate at which I succeeded at this part and the previous parts. So here's how you interpret the results for this first test. I succeeded at the setup step 51% of the time. I successfully got the body slam 47% of the time, I successfully got both the setup and the body slam only 24% of the time. After getting the body slam, I would complete the rest of the skip mistake free at a rate of 46%. That means that the percentage of times that I would do the entire skip mistake free comes out to just 11%. So my plan for practicing the skip was, I would do a large amount of practice for 3 days, and then I would do 1 hour of practice per day for a period of time after that. My original plan was to practice on an emulator so that I could make save states. This would save a lot of time over practicing on console, where it takes time to load a save, and the save points are few and far between. With the emulator, I could make save states wherever I wanted and load them instantly with the press of a key. So on October 5th, I practiced warp skip on the emulator for three and a half hours. Then I switched to console and did a few minutes of practice to see if the practice on the emulator translated to the console. It did not. The gameplay on the emulator was significantly different from the gameplay on the console. There were two reasons for this. One, the game speed on the emulator fluctuated way too much. And two, there was a significant amount of input lag on the emulator, meaning that there was a noticeable delay between pressing a button on the controller and crash moving on the screen. For these reasons, I decided that I would have to practice on console from now on. So on October 6th, I practiced warp skip for two hours and then stopped because a muscle in my forearm started hurting. On October 7th, I practiced for two hours and 40 minutes. So there you go, practicing warp skip for 3 days, good job. Then I recorded warp skip attempts for another 30 minutes so that I could analyze the success rates and see if there was any progress. These are the results. If you compare them to the results of the first test, which was done before the 3 days of practice, you can see that there was improvement in every metric except for the individual success rate of finishes. I think that's because I was missing the slide jump a lot more than usual during the test, so I should definitely work on that. In addition, I also analyzed 3 live streams I did of any percent run attempts. This data is less comparable to those from the test because of the smaller sample size and the fact that success rates during actual speed runs might be way different than success rates during practice. For the last two streams, I also did a bunch of practice attempts mixed in with the run attempts. I think in the future though, I will just measure the warp skip attempts done in actual runs as opposed to the extra practice attempts done after the run has died because the warp skip attempts done in actual runs is the main thing I'm trying to improve. But yeah, all the rates got worse so the practice has done nothing yet. Nice. Anyways, I'm going to do one hour of practice per day for a while, and then make a follow-up video after that to see if any more improvement took place. So yep, that's the video. I don't even know if people find this stuff interesting. I would greatly appreciate feedback on how I can make better videos. Goodbye.